Good morning. In unison, good morning. In unison, good morning, your honor. Counsel, you may proceed. Mr. Chacon, would you come forward, please? Right up there. When you get to the witness stand, please remain standing. Face the clerk and raise your right hand. Yes, ma'am. Please be seated. State and spell your name for the record. Ralph Chacon, C-H-A-C-O-N. Mr. Chacon, in order for everybody to hear you, you're going to need to lean into that microphone, okay? Would you do that for us? Yes, sir. Thank you. Mr. Chacon, did you used to work at Neverland Valley Ranch? Yes, sir. During what period of time? Between, 91 and, 94. And prior to working at Neverland Valley Ranch, where, what employment did you have? I used to repo vehicles in Thousand Oaks. Is that where you're from, Thousand Oaks? Born and raised, yes, sir. And during the time that you were at Neverland Valley Ranch, what was your position? Security. And could you describe to the ladies and gentlemen of the jury generally what your responsibilities were as a security officer? Secure Neverland property, front gate, fence lines, around the main house, keeping intruders out, and also taking care of the temperatures in the animal areas. What shift did you work at the ranch? Graveyard. Would you tell us what, graveyard, what that entails? What are the hours? From 10 o'clock till 6 o'clock in the morning. Now, do you recall a time when you were working at the Neverland Valley Ranch in which Mr. Jackson was the subject of an investigation? Yes, sir. And what years was that? Do you recall? I really don't. I don't recall. During the time that you were at the ranch, did you get subpoenaed to appear before the Santa Barbara County Grand Jury? Yes, sir, I did. Do you recall when that was? I believe it was in, 94. Do you recall the month? I'm guessing, could be probably May or something around there. I'm not sure. And do you know an individual by the name of Qasim Abdul? Yes, sir. Who is Qasim Abdul? He was at that time chief of security at Neverland. And at the time that you were subpoenaed before the grand jury, were you and Mr. Abdul carpooling back and forth to work? Yes, sir, we were. And how long had you known Mr. Abdul? Probably the duration of our employment at Neverland. Probably about three years. Three, four years. Something like that. And to your knowledge, did Mr. Abdul also get subpoenaed to appear before the grand jury? Yes, sir, he did. And do you recall where you were directed to appear, which county? Supposed to be in Los Angeles County. But I didn't go to Los Angeles County. At some time prior to appearing before the grand jury, pursuant to subpoena, were you contacted by attorneys representing Mr. Jackson? Yes, sir. On how many occasions? I can remember two occasions that I was called to come before them. And do you recall who those attorneys were? Mr. Steve Cochran, I believe, and I remember an Eric Mason. Mr. Sanger. Do you recall where the first meeting occurred? It happened in Mr. Jackson's outside office at Neverland. And do you recall when the second meeting occurred? It happened in Santa Barbara at Mr. Sanger's office. And were both of these meetings prior to the time you were to appear before the grand jury, your subpoena date? Yes, sir. Now, as a result of the receiving a subpoena to the grand jury, did you make contact with law enforcement? Yes, I did. And do you recall who it was you contacted? I believe it was Mr. Burchim. And do you recall what agency Mr. Burchim worked for? I believe it was the sheriff, Santa Barbara Sheriff's Department. And when you, I'm sorry, when you contacted Mr. Burchim, did you have a conversation with him? Yes, sir. And did you relay to him certain information? I did. And after that, did you have contact with any other? Was there more than one meeting with Mr. Burchim? I'm sure there was, but I don't remember. But I know there was more than two meetings with him. Now, you told the ladies and gentlemen of the jury that you did not appear before the Los Angeles County Grand Jury. Did you at some time make a statement under oath with regard to what you observed? Yes, sir, I did. And do you recall when that was? I believe it was, 94. I'm not for certain. It's been a while. 
Do you recall whether it was at or about the time when you were supposed to appear before the grand jury? Oh, yes, sir. It was probably the day after. And do you recall where it was that you were interviewed? In Santa Barbara. And do you recall who was present during the time that you were interviewed? Well, the only ones that I remember is yourself and Mr. Burchim. And was that statement given under oath? Yes, sir. Now, during the time that you were employed at Neverland Ranch, did you personally observe anything that you felt was inappropriate with regard to Mr. Jackson's behavior? Yes, sir. Or conduct? And do you recall approximately what year that was? I want to say latter, 92 or early, 93. I am not, I'm not positive. Do you recall what time of day or night it was? It was, well, I had come on graveyard shift, so it had to have been about probably midnight, or before midnight. And do you recall what the weather was like that night? It was very nice, very nice weather. Now, when you first came to work that evening, what were the first things that you did, do you recall? I would come in and check out the radio. We carried radios and a flashlight. I would check my box for any memos that were generated. Then I would, we had, there was electric golf carts that we had to put on chargers for the night. At some time that evening, did you see Mr. Jackson? Yes, sir. And do you recall where Mr. Jackson was the first time that you saw him that evening? He was headed for the jacuzzi. And do you know whether or not he was alone or with someone? He was with someone. And when you say he was with someone, do you know who that was? Yes, sir. Who was that? That was Jordy. And could you approximate the age of Jordy? I want to say nine, ten years old. So he was with a child? Yes, sir. Not an adult? No. Objection. Leading. Overruled. Next question. Now, I may have missed this or I may have asked this. When you say you saw Mr. Jackson in the company of this child, Jordy, what direction were they headed? Towards the jacuzzi. Is that an area near where you were putting things away? It was close by, but from the area where I was at, the garage area, I had, I had gone to the barbecue area, which was close, maybe 10 feet, to the jacuzzi. And did you, were you able to see Mr. Jackson and the child in the jacuzzi? I couldn't see them from where I was standing, but I could hear them in the water. Now, at some point, did you hear Mr. Jackson speak out? Yes, sir. And what, your honor, this is not offered for the truth of the matter, but simply to explain the conduct that occurs thereafter. All right. What did you hear Mr. Jackson say? While in the jacuzzi? Yes. They were just, just laughing, playing. I don't remember what they were saying, but I know that they were talking and having fun. At some time did Mr. Jackson request something from the house? Objection. Leading. That was before. Just a moment. You have to wait for the judge to rule, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Overruled. You may answer. Okay, now you can answer. Do you want the question read back? No, sir. Well, actually, that was. I heard them. I heard him when I was still hooking up the golf carts. He had called for security. Objection. Non-responsive. Sustained. Okay. So at some point you heard Mr. Jackson yell for security? Yes, sir. And where were you when that occurred? I was in the garage area. Now, at some point that evening, did you see Mr. Jackson and the child, Jordy, leave the jacuzzi? Yes, sir, I did. Could you tell the ladies and gentlemen of the jury, were you able to observe where they went? Yes, sir. And where did they go? They were going to the outside restroom area by the rec room. And is the rec room near another building or attached to a building on the premises? Well, it's on its, the restroom's attached to the rec room. So it sits by itself. It's two stories. All right. Are there other facilities inside of that building itself? Just a game room. That's all it was. Do you know what the game room is called? Just, no, I don't. Describe the game room, if you would. They had, like, probably maybe 20 different type of computer games, the first floor, and also with the top, the top floor had different type of games. Have you been in that building before? Yes, sir. And do you know whether or not that building has a cellar? 
A what, sir? A cellar? Um, I want to say that had a wine cellar. Yes, sir. All right. In any event, you saw Mr. Jackson and the child heading towards the restroom area. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Did you watch them the entire time? Yes, sir. And did you see where they went? They went inside the restroom. Now, where were you located when you observed this? I was in the barbecue area, where I usually normally observe everything. That's a security position you're assigned? Yes, sir. Now, at the time that you saw Mr. Jackson and the boy go into the restroom area, did you at some point in time approach the restroom? Yes, I did. Do you recall from the time that you saw Mr. Jackson and the child go into the restroom area, how long it was before you approached the area? Probably a half an hour, maybe 35, 40 minutes. And then could you describe to the ladies and gentlemen of the jury where you went? I went around the rec room that leads right behind the restrooms. That's where I went. And what did you do when you got there? Well, when you got in that area, did you hear or see anything? Yes, sir. And which? Well, I heard first that Mr. Jackson and the boy were inside a shower, the shower room in there. How many showers are there in the restroom? There was only one shower. Let's just stop right there for just a second, before we go any further. Could you explain to the ladies and gentlemen of the jury the interior of the restroom area? As you go in from the rec room, the women's restroom is on the left and the men's room is on the right. And as you go in, there's a dressing area, and it's open, and it leads into where the wash basins are at, pretty large area. And then it goes into another smaller room where there's a toilet and the showers. And you said, showers? Shower. Excuse me, shower. All right. Now, you've indicated that you heard some people in the shower. Did you recognize the voices? Yes, sir, I did. Whose voices did you recognize? Mr. Jackson's and Geordie's. And did you look into the shower area? Not right away. Not the first time that I came around, because I couldn't see anything. But I started to leave the area when I, I was thinking, I said, what's going on here? You know, there's a grown man in a shower with a boy. Objection. Move to strike. Stricken. All right, so you left? Right. How far did you go? I didn't go too far, probably halfway around the rec room. All right, and did you decide to go back? Yes, sir, I did. Why did you decide to go back? I wanted to know what was going on in there. Why? Because it wasn't, it wasn't right. Objection. Relevance. Move to strike. I'll strike the question, why, and the answer. Okay, so you went back. When you went back, where did you go to? I went back to the same area where the shower was located. There was a window, and I was able to see and they were no longer in the shower. So you looked into the window? Yes, sir. All right, and what did you see? Where did you see Mr. Jackson and the child at this point? I saw them standing in the nude in the middle area, and Jordy was on the right, and he was on the left side. Standing, facing each other. Now, at the time that you saw that, what were the lighting conditions inside of the restroom? Oh, it was lit up, just that area there. Not where the shower's at, but that area, it was, the lights were on. Did you have any difficulty seeing in there? Not at all, sir. Now, from the point outside looking down inside, what did you see go on between the defendant, Mr. Jackson, and Jordan Chandler? I saw that Mr. Jackson was caressing the boy's hair, he was kissing him on his head, and his face, his lips. He started kissing him on the shoulders and started going down to his nipples. Started sucking his nipples. Started going down to his penis and putting it in his mouth. And about that time I just, I left. Okay. You say you saw him go down and do what? He put the little boy's penis in his mouth. Did you actually see that? Yes, sir. And then you left? Yes, sir. Where did you go? I went back to the barbecue area. Do you recall, after you left that area and observed the things you've just related to the jury, did you see Mr. Jackson with the child again that evening? Yes, sir, I did. And where were you when you saw them? I was in the barbecue area. And where, where were they when you saw them again? They were coming out of the restroom. 
Now, from the time that you had left, when you had made your observations. Yes, sir. And you left, till the time that they came out of the restroom. How much time had elapsed during that period of time? Probably 20 minutes or 30 minutes. Now, when they came out of the restroom, could you describe what was going on? Jordy was mounted on Michael's back, piggybacked, and they were headed for the back of the, the kitchen door to the main house. Did the child, Jordan, have any clothing on? He had. I believe it was like, it was a towel. I believe it was a towel. It's the type, like it's a rope, but it's a towel. So a cloth robe or towel of some kind? Yes, sir. Okay. And what was Mr. Jackson wearing, if you recall? Same. Could you see whether or not the child, Jordan, had any other clothing on or not? No, sir. I didn't observe. And where did they go? They went inside the house, the main house. And when they went inside the main house, did you hear or observe anything happen that you felt was unusual? Yes. Mr. Jackson double-locked the door, the back door, which he normally never did. Security always went inside to secure the house inside and out. Now, you say, you described to the jury that Mr. Jackson was kissing the boy. Yes, sir. That you observed. How would you describe the kissing? Well, it was very passionate. Very passionately he was kissing him. And did you see his hands during the time he was kissing him? Yes, sir. Where were they? They were all over his body. All right. I want to show you a couple of photographs, if we might, Mr. Chacon. I've shown these to counsel, your honor. The photographs are 790, 791, and 792. All right. Mr. Chacon, let's look at the photographs. First of all, let's start with 790. Do you recognize that? 790? Yeah. I'm sorry. You have to turn it over on the back. Oh, yes, sir. All right. Let's start with that. Do you recognize what's depicted in the photograph, 790? Yes, sir. And what is that? That's where the swimming pool's at, and it's, you're facing at the rec room in front of you, and to the left is the garage area where the carts, where I was hooking up the carts. Does that photograph depict a portion or some of the route that you took where you walked to the area that you observed Mr. Jackson and the child, Jordan? Yes, sir. Now, what I'd like you to do is to please take that black felt tip pen that I've given you there, and would you please just draw the path that you took that's covered by that photograph, that portion of it. And does that photograph accurately depict the area of what you call the rec room at the time that you made the observations of Mr. Jackson and the child, Jordan? Yes, sir. All right, let's turn that one over and go to the next one that has 791 on it, okay? Do you recognize that? Yes, sir. All right. What is 791? It's the pool area, and directly in front is the rec room in the restroom. The restrooms. Does the photograph, 791, show the area of the entrance into the bathroom area? Yes, sir. And does it show the jacuzzi? Yes, sir. And does it show the approximate area of the, where you made your observations? Well, it's behind the, just the other side of the jacuzzi. Yes, sir. Okay. With regard to that particular photograph, and I'm going to ask you, does it accurately depict the area as you recall it in 1992 or 93 when you made your observations? Yes, sir. All right. I'm going to ask you, please, take that black marker, please, and if you would just circle the area that depicts the entrance into the restroom area? And would you please put an X in the approximate area where it was that you made the observations of Mr. Jackson and the child? Now, let's take the last photograph, which is 792 for identification purposes. Do you recognize that photograph? Yes, sir. And can you tell the jury what that is, please? It's the barbecue area. Okay. Now, is that the area that you have made reference to in your testimony? Yes, sir. And does that photograph accurately depict that area as it was back when you were working at Neverland Valley Ranch? Yes, sir. Your Honor, I move that 790, 791, and 792 be admitted into evidence. No objection. They're admitted. And, Your Honor, could we have the input for the Elmo, please? This is a laser and I'm going to ask you to point to some things. Okay. All right. 
This is the exhibit that's been marked as Exhibit 790 for identification purposes, all right? Do you recognize that, Mr. Chacon? Yes, sir. Would you show the jury the black line that you placed on this particular exhibit? Okay. It starts at the left-hand side of the photograph, is that correct? Yes, sir. And moves. Go ahead. Just trace it. All the way to almost the right-hand side. Or the left-hand side of the building, correct? Yes, sir. Would you tell the ladies and gentlemen of the jury, as you walk down past the side of that building that's depicted in the far right-hand side of the photograph, People 790, what is down there? There is a tennis court. It's a sunken tennis court. And what are the lighting conditions? Is there a path that goes along there? Yes, sir, there is. What are the lighting conditions along that path? Around the back, there wasn't. How about along the path itself? Towards the, behind the restrooms, there was a path where there was just small little lights on the ground. Now, did you have a flashlight with you that night? Yes, sir. Is that part of your standard equipment? Yes. That you carry on the graveyard shift? Yes, sir. The building that's depicted on the far right-hand side of the photograph. Yes, sir. The one you're showing the jury there. What is that building there? That's the rec room. And let's go to 791, if we could. All right. Would you show the ladies and gentlemen of the jury, first of all, what you referred to as a jacuzzi? Right here. So that's in the lower left-hand corner of the exhibit, 791? Yes, sir. Now, where is the entrance to the restroom? Right in there. And it's hard to see, but you drew a circle around that in black? Yes, sir. Right there. And now, where, on this photograph, if you can, can you show the approximate area of where it was that you have made the observations you described to the jury? Well, this is the restroom in front, and on the side, about right in there. The path is right on the other side on the building there. On the back side of the building? Yes, sir. Okay. Now, let's show the next photograph and then I'll come back to this. This is 792 in evidence. Do you recognize that? Yes, sir. And what is that? That's the barbecue area. Okay. Now, with regard to this particular photograph, where were you located in your position as a security officer on this evening when you observed the defendant and the child, Jordan, walk into the restroom? I was about right in that area. So you're indicating to the right-hand side of the barbecue area, just to the right of the post? Right. Yes, sir. The post on the, and were you behind the barbecue itself or on the other side of it? Well, well, actually, I was like, I was moving up and down the side of it, on the other side. On the outside of it? Yes, sir. So not in the interior part, but? Well, it was in the, the interior is on the other side also. Because this is in the center. Just so we can get it clarified, which side of that were you on? I was on, I believe I was on that other side. Now, is the area of the, let's go back to 791 for a second, if we could. You pointed out the jacuzzi, and obviously there's a swimming pool also there. Yes, sir. Now, with regard to that area, is that area lit at night? It is. Or was it then? Let's put it that way. Yeah, just a bit. Because the sidewalks had these lights, these small lights, as you went up through the path. And if I remember correctly, I guess there was some, some lighting, but not that much. But you could see where you were walking, though. Okay, all right, you can take that down. I have three more photographs, I've shown them to counsel, that have been marked as 793, 794, and 795 for identification purposes. I'd like to show them to the witness. All right. Mr. Chacon, I'm going to show you the photograph marked as 793. You've seen that photograph before? Yes, sir. And do you recognize the person that you believe that that photograph depicts? Yes, sir. Who is that? Jordy. Is that a depiction of the child as you recall him back in those days? Yes, sir. And with regard to 794, it has two photographs on it, one at the top and one at the bottom. The one at the top is a singular photograph of an individual, and the one at the bottom has four people in that. Do you recognize the people in that photograph? Yes, sir. 
and again, who is that? Jordy. And in the photograph at the bottom, there are a number of people depicted. Which of them do you recognize as Jordy? This one here. Would you please take that black pen and just put an arrow towards, start on the white, down below. Okay. Thank you. And with regard to 795, do you recognize that? Yes, sir. And again, there are a number of people depicted in that photograph, correct? Yes, sir. And do you recognize anybody in that photograph? Yes, sir, I do. Who would that be? That's Jordy. By that, you mean who, in terms of, there's one, two, three, four, five people depicted. The fifth one. All the way over to the left? All the way over to the left. Are these accurate depictions of the child as you recall him back in those days? Yes, sir. Move that they be admitted into evidence, your honor. No objection. Admitted. Now, Mr. Chacon, are you familiar with a child by the name, a young boy by the name of Brett Barnes? Yes, sir. And have you seen Mr. Barnes before? Yes, sir. Have you seen him at the ranch before? Yes, sir. Have you seen him in the company of the defendant before? Yes, sir. On how many occasions? Numerous occasions. I couldn't give you a figure. When Mr. Barnes was at the ranch, do you recall whether or not his parents were with him? At times they were, at other times they weren't. Now, with regard to the child you've described and identified as Jordan Chandler, and the child that you also saw as Brett Barnes, can you tell us what they look like? Well, to me, I always got them confused, because they looked the same, similar. I know one was a little bit shorter than the other. But, you know, I always got them confused, but they looked, they looked alike. Maybe one had hair a little bit shorter than the other. Objection. Non-responsive. Narrative. Overruled. Go ahead. But I would get them, I would, they just looked the same to me. All right, if we could have the Elmo again. I'm going to start backwards at 795. Now, would you use the, thank you. That's the child you identified by the name of what? Jordy. All right, and now 794. Let's do the bottom one for right now. Now, the bottom one, you put an arrow, is that correct? Yes, sir. Which is the child that you were identifying that you recognize as Jordy? Okay, the one in the middle of the photograph? Yes. In the front? Yes, sir. Right? And let's, let me ask a question about the top photograph. With regard to that photograph, do you recognize that person? Yes, sir. All right. Who's that? That's Jordy. Okay. And lastly, that's 793 in evidence. And you've identified that individual as also Jordy, correct? Yes, sir. All right. Thank you. We could have the lights again. Now, during the time of your employment at Neverland Valley Ranch, let me go back a second, okay? Yes, sir. With regard to the incidents that you just described to the ladies and gentlemen of the jury here involving Mr. Jackson and the child you've identified as Jordan, correct? Yes, sir. Are those, is that, is that what you told the grand jury when you were interviewed back in 1994? Yes, sir, I did. Now, let's go on for just a moment. Did you see any other incidents involving Mr. Jackson and the child you described as Jordan? Yes, sir. With regard to the second, and let's just call it the second incident. With regard to the second incident, do you recall how much time had elapsed between the two incidents? I don't recall, sir. Could you give us some idea whether it was weeks, months, or years? Could have been weeks. Could have been a month. I'm not positive. It's been a while. Okay. And let me go back just for one second before we move on to the second incident. Was there another thing that occurred on the evening of the incident where you saw Mr. Jackson and the child, Jordan, in the restroom together that you had to actually make a report on? Yes, sir. And what was, what was that? Well. What happened? Well, Qasim Abdul and myself, we were going around the house, the back side of the house, checking for anything that was open, the normal security checkup that we would do around the house. And we observed that the two French doors in the middle of the house were wide open. And so a note was made of that to your supervisor? Yes, sir. Who was your supervisor? 
Lieutenant Wade. Qasim Abdul had written a report in regards to the French doors being open and we didn't close them. Objection. Non-responsive. Sustained. Move to strike. After, Lieutenant Wade, is stricken. Okay. So a report was prepared of that? Yes, sir. Now, the incident about the French doors being open, was that before or after you had observed Mr. Jackson? After. It was later that evening? Yes, sir. All right, now we can move on. On the second incident, we're going to call it the second incident just for purposes of, what was it? Were you working graveyard again? Yes, sir. And do you recall approximately what time of the night it was? It was in the evening, after 10 o'clock when I come on. Where were you? I was in the pool area. Barbecue area, pool area. And did you see Mr. Jackson that evening? Let me go back. Did you see Jordan that evening? Yes, I did. And the child you've identified as Brett, did you see him that evening? Yes, sir. Where were they? They were in the rec room, playing with the machines. Was there any other children in the rec room? Yes, I noticed a little girl, probably five, six years old. I didn't know who she was, but I'm sure she was probably a sister of one of the boys. And did you at some point become aware of the fact? Let me ask you this. Prior, when the children were in the rec room playing, to your knowledge, was Mr. Jackson on the premises? No, sir. And did you become aware at some point in time that Mr. Jackson was on the premises? Yes, sir. And did you at some point see Mr. Jackson on the premises? Yes, sir. And where was Mr. Jackson the first time you saw him? He was coming out the back of his door, the back door of his house, the main house. All right. And describe to the jury what you observed Mr. Jackson to do. He kind of ran up to the rec room, and he was looking in from the outside, and he spotted Jordy in one of those little, it's like a car you play, a racing car. And Mr. Jackson went around the area where the restrooms were at. There's a back door that goes into the rec room, and he located Jordy back there, and he went to where Jordy was at and. Let's just stop right there for just a second, okay? You saw him go into the rec room through a back door entrance? Yes, sir. At the time you saw him go up to Jordan, where were the other children? Could you see? Yeah, they were upstairs playing games. Were the lights on inside of the rec room? Yes, sir. Did you have any difficulty seeing in the rec room? Oh, no, no, sir. And where were you located at the time you made these observations? I was around the pool area, almost right directly in front of the rec room. Now, at that point in time when you saw Mr. Jackson go actually physically into the rec room, describe to the jury what you saw occur. Well, I saw him enter through the back door of the rec room, and he went over to Jordy. He bent over and said something to him, and then he kissed him. And then they got out the back door and they ran over to Mr. Jackson's moon rover, and, that was a golf cart that he had specially made for himself, and they took off. When you say he kissed him, did you see where he kissed him? Not exactly, but I know he kissed him. Now, at some point that evening, did you see Mr. Jackson again? Yes, sir. When they came back. When they came back. And where were you when they came back? I was in the barbecue area. And when they came back, where did they, physically, where did you see them when you? They pulled up to what they called the breezeway, which is between the main office and the main house, the outside office in the main house. Okay behind the back. And what did, what, was anybody else present when they drove up? Qasim Abdul was coming from the security at that time also. So what did you see occur at that point in time? Well, I saw that Mr. Jackson and Brett, I mean Jordy got off the cart. And Qasim noticed that they were back, so he just headed back to the security, security office. And Mr. Jackson and the boy were in front of the, they call it the Peter Pan display. It's a window where Peter Pan lights up. Can you describe that? Where is that located? What building? Well, it's the, it's where the office is at, behind the main house. It's connected. There's a breezeway, but it's connected. And there's a display window, or a window where this Peter Pan display is at, where it lights up and you see Tinkerbell flying around the window. Okay. Could you describe to the jury the positions of the child and the defendant, Mr. Jackson? Well, they were looking at the display. 
the Tinkerbell lighting up. And he was. Jordy was in front, Mr. Jackson was in back, and he had his hands over like this, and. You're indicating over. Over his back, towards the front. Okay. And then he turned him around, kissed him. It was passionate, but it didn't last that long. And then his hands went down to his private areas. And then they ran inside the house. All right. You say he kissed him, and it was not very long but it was passionate. Where did he kiss the child? In the mouth. And when you say, his hands went down, where did they go, whose hands went down where? Mr. Jackson's hands went down to his crotch area, the boys. The boys? Yes, sir. And what, how long, how long do you estimate that this incident took? It was, it didn't take very long. Probably 10 seconds, 20 minutes. I'm not sure. And then at that point what did you see? They went, ran inside the back, the inside of the house. Both the child and Mr. Jackson? Yes, sir. Just a moment, your honor. Well, I must have misplaced it. Your honor, I have one other photograph I'd like to have marked as 796 for identification purposes. And I've shown it to counsel. With regard to the exhibit, 796, do you recognize that? Yes, sir. What is, what is that? This is behind the house. This is behind the house. This is the office. And this is the breezeway. So when you talk about a breezeway in your testimony, this photograph depicts that breezeway? Yes, sir. And does it depict the office that you were talking about? Yes, sir. All right. What I want you to do is, on that photograph, just draw a little arrow and an O to the building that you indicated as the office, okay? Yes, sir. And then just put a big B in the area that you call the breezeway. All right. Is that photograph an accurate depiction of the area as you recall it back when you observed these incidents? Yes, sir. All right. Move that it be admitted into evidence, your honor. No objection. It's admitted. Could we have the lights just briefly, your honor? All right. This is 796, the photograph we were just talking about, okay? Yes. Would you use that little red laser again, and indicate, there's the, B, that you put, and that is the area that you consider the breezeway? Yes, sir. And you also put an, O, with an arrow. Would you find that for the jury? All right. And that's the area that you described as what? The outer office where the display is on the window. Okay. All right. All right. That's good. I just wanted to get those down so everybody can get an idea of what it was like. All right. We can have the lights again. Now, prior to the time, let me ask you this, with regard to the testimony you've just related to the ladies and gentlemen of the jury here this morning, did you also describe those incidents to the, when you were asked to make a statement under oath? Yes, sir. When you were subpoenaed to the grand jury? Yes, sir. Now, prior to the time that you appeared to give a statement under oath as to the events that you related here this morning, had you ever told anyone about what you saw? No, sir. Had you ever mentioned it to anybody? No, sir. Why not? Objection. Relevance. Overruled. You may answer. Well, a lot of things went through my mind, but one of the things was who would believe me. Why? Well. Objection. Sustained. What else went through your mind? Objection. Sustained. Have you ever personally met anybody by the name of Blanca Francia? No, sir. Have you ever personally met anyone by the name of Philippe Lamarck? No, sir. Have you met Wade Robson? Yes, sir. And how did you meet Wade Robson? Just by being on the property and, and him being on the property. How often was he on the property? Numerous times, but I can't give you a number of how many times. Mr. Chacon, when you left the ranch as an employee, okay? Yes, sir. Oh, I had another question before we get there. Were you armed? No, sir. At the time that Mr. Jackson, during the time that you became aware of the fact that Mr. Jackson was under investigation, were there any guards on the ranch property that were armed? Yes, sir. And how many? There was about four or five of them. Were they people who had been employed by the ranch as security officers for, prior to that time? No, sir. Now, 
When you left the ranch, why did you leave? I was forced to leave. Objection. Relevance. Overruled. You may answer. I was forced to leave because of the OS, the bodyguards that came on the property that were armed, because we would not comply with whatever they wanted us to do or say, because we didn't, we didn't, we went to the grand jury, but they didn't know what we had said so they had put pressure on us to quit. Did you ever tell anybody after you went to the grand jury what you had testified to in front of the grand jury? After? Yeah. Anybody associated with Mr. Jackson? Yes. Who was that? Qasim Abdul. And that's the person you worked with? Yes, sir. Other than that, anybody else? No, sir. Did you at some point in time file a lawsuit against Mr. Jackson, you and other members of the staff? Yes, sir, we did. And in that particular lawsuit, where was that tried? Santa Maria, right here, sir. And did you lose that lawsuit? Yes, sir. I have no further questions, your honor. Cross-examine? Yes, please, your honor. Good morning, Mr. Chacon. Good morning, sir. Mr. Chacon, my name is Tom Mesero, and I speak for Mr. Jackson. Yes, sir. I'd like to ask you a few questions about that lawsuit you lost. That was the longest civil trial in the history of Santa Maria, right? I don't know, sir. It went about six months, didn't it? I believe so, yes, sir. You sued Mr. Jackson and you wanted $16 million, right? Well, I don't know about the $16 million. You wanted millions, true? No, sir. Really? Well, I don't know, sir. Whatever our attorney was, he's the one who was speaking for us. Okay, we'll get into that. You sued Mr. Jackson claiming you were wrongfully terminated, right? That's correct, sir. He sued you claiming you had stolen property from him, true? That's correct, sir. The jury found you were not wrongfully terminated by Mr. Jackson, correct? But we were, sir. Answer my question, please. Did the Santa Maria jury find you were not wrongfully terminated by Mr. Jackson? Yes, sir. And they also found you had stolen property from Mr. Jackson, correct? But I didn't, sir. Did the Santa Maria jury find you had stolen property from Mr. Jackson? Yes, sir. A judgment was entered against you, Mr. Chacon, for $25,000, the value of what you had stolen, correct? For candy bars, sir? A judgment was entered against you for $25,000, the value of what the court found you had stolen, correct? Well, if a candy bar is worth that much, yes, sir. That's not all you owe Mr. Jackson currently, is it? No, sir. I don't owe him. In fact, Judge Zell Cantor of this court entered a judgment against you and your co-defendants for $1,473,117.61, correct? Yes, sir. He ordered you pay all of Mr. Jackson's legal fees and costs, correct? Yes, sir. Have you ever paid any of that judgment, Mr. Chacon? No, sir. I filed bankruptcy. Now, the jury found you not only stole from Mr. Jackson, but you acted maliciously, correct? No, sir. Did a judge find you had acted with malice? No, sir. Is there a judgment against you for acting with fraud against Mr. Jackson? That I know of, no, sir. Would it refresh your recollection to look at the judgment? Yes, sir. May I approach, your honor? Yes. Okay. Oh, it's there, sir. I didn't know. Yes, sir. Have you had a chance to look at that judgment, Mr. Chacon? Do you mean right now? Yes. Yes, sir. There is not only a judgment against you in favor of Mr. Jackson. Wait a minute. I'm going to object. He asked to refresh his recollection. He should ask him if it did. Sure. That's correct. Have you had a chance to look at the judgment against you, Mr. Chacon? I looked at that, yes, sir. But I don't remember it. Does it refresh your recollection that there's a judgment against you for fraud and malice? No, sir. In favor of Mr. Jackson? Yes, sir. You never heard of that before? 
Well, probably, but I don't remember. After a six-month trial, you don't remember? Well, it's been 12 years also, sir, or so. Do you remember stipulating and agreeing that you had personally acted with fraud, oppression and malice against Mr. Jackson? Probably so, sir. You did that, didn't you? No, sir. You didn't stipulate that you had acted with fraud, oppression, and malice against Mr. Jackson in that case? Well, yes, sir. After a six-month trial, this is a good way to get even with him, isn't it? Argumentative. Object. Your Honor. Move to strike. Sustained. Do you have any motive today, sir, to get even with Mr. Jackson? No, sir. Do you remember telling a therapist you'd rather get a million dollars from Mr. Jackson than work? No, sir. Do you remember being evaluated by a PhD named Dr. Scott Gorsuch? I don't recall, sir. Do you recall being evaluated by a therapist in that lawsuit? Probably at one point, but I don't recall it, sir. Who was your lawyer in that case? Mr. Ring from Santa Barbara. Do you remember, in response to being called a malinger, you said, I'd like just a million from Mr. Jackson? That's not true, sir. Never happened? No, sir. Do you recall making statements you didn't want to work again? No, sir. Okay. After you left Mr. Jackson, you filed for disability, didn't you? Yes, sir. You weren't disabled, were you? I think it was just unemployment, wasn't it? Did you file for disability, Mr. Chacon, after you left Mr. Jackson's employment? It was unemployment, I believe it was. Okay. You had a deposition taken in that case under oath, correct? Yes, sir. And that was not the first time you had ever been deposed, correct? I don't understand, sir, what you're saying. You had had your deposition taken in lawsuits before that one, true? No, sir, not that I recall. That was the first deposition you'd ever had taken that you recall? In my life? Yes. Yes, sir. Okay. Do you remember being asked if you were aware that your attorney wanted $16 million for you from Mr. Jackson and you said you understood that? No, sir. Would it refresh your recollection to show you a page from your deposition? Yes, sir. May I approach, your honor? Yes. Where does it say $16 million? Oh, okay, I see that. Have you had a chance to look at that page of your deposition? Yes, sir. Remember you said you were aware that your lawyer had asked for 16 million? I'm going to ask that counsel be directed to ask whether it refreshes his recollection before he reads. I'm sorry. I will withdraw the question. Have you looked at that deposition? Yes, sir. You were under oath at the time, correct? Yes, sir. Does it refresh your recollection that you admitted you knew your lawyer had asked for 16 million dollars? No, sir. In fact, you said you didn't think 16 million was enough, correct? No, sir. Would it refresh your recollection if I just show you your deposition? Yes, sir. May I approach? Yes. That's on there. Have you had a chance to look at that page? Yes, sir. Does it refresh your recollection that you didn't think 16 million dollars was enough to you? No, sir, I don't. You didn't say that? No, I mean, I don't, now I see it's written down there, yes, sir. Well, how much did you want in the lawsuit, sir? Object as argumentative, your honor. Sustained. In that lawsuit, you tried to extort Mr. Jackson, didn't you? No, sir. Object. Argumentative, your honor. Sustained. Do you remember being asked at the beginning of your deposition, have you ever been deposed before? And you said, yes. No, I don't recall, sir. Might it refresh your recollection to see that page? Yes, sir. May I approach, your honor? Yes. Okay, sir. Have you had a chance to look at that? Yes, sir. Does it remind you that you admitted you had been deposed before? I, I don't remember. But it's down there, yes, sir. Well, You'd been in other lawsuits before this, hadn't? Counsel, I believe it's time for our break.
Oh.